Hello, everyone. Greetings. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good, uh, good morning to everyone that's here today um, to hear about our Seidenberg School of Computer Science, our admitted student event. It is very exciting to be here, to be able to present about PACE, but more in terms of the time that you're investing into the university, the return on investment, which is uh, pretty much the phrase that we've been talking about here. You know, you're, if you're coming in for undergraduate, the four years that you're going to put in, or if you're coming in for postgraduate for the two years or so that you're going to put in here at PACE, you want to make sure that you're getting everything that you can out of it academically, but also what are you going to be achieving throughout the time that you are at PACE and then afterwards. So I'm very glad to be here. My name is Robert Medrano. I'm the Director of International Admission and Recruitment here at PACE for both undergraduate and postgraduate. I'm also joined by uh, fellow colleagues in career services, Phyllis Mooney, uh, as well as individuals within our computer science school, Dr. Jonathan Hill and Jill Olimpieri, as well as the Assistant Director of International Admission, Ms. Kelly Moran, along with a number of our current students and even an alum to be able to discuss in terms of what they've experienced here at Pace University. So I'm very happy to be able to present. We have a lot of content to discuss. On my end, I'm just going to discuss a few things about next steps uh, now that you've been admitted into PACE, and then I'm going to proceed in uh, handing it off to our colleagues in Career Services, Seidenberg School of Computer Science, and then also hear about our uh, current students. So without much further ado, let me just go over a few things that we need. Uh, next steps for admissions. So you've been admitted. If you haven't been able to submit your deposit or you're in the process of submitting your deposit, please be able to go and click on this link. And this is again recorded. So I'll make sure that I'm sending this out to all of our students so you can have this uh, as a step-by-step. -step. But please, once you are admitted and you receive your admission uh, decision letter, make sure you click on the link right here. You can see it's a long hyperlink. That is going to lead you to uh, the website, the page, and you're going to see this. It's going to say deposit now, fall 21 admitted students. All right, so just make sure, make sure that you're able to click on the button, deposit now, and then you're going to see a few extra steps. Again, uh, the best ideal would be if you can submit your deposit as soon as possible, but you do have until May 1st for our undergraduate students. Next steps in regards to admissions. Uh, it's your I-20. We receive so many emails as well as through our WhatsApp chats uh, regarding next steps for the I-20. So again, I'm including this hyperlink. Please make sure to utilize it. You'll see right there. And then you'll see a couple of next steps. It does require financial affidavits, uh, which is basically your like income for the first year. Everything is listed in terms of once you click on the links. We'll also need uh, bank documentation regarding uh, sufficient funds for the year, as I mentioned, uh, and as well as making sure that you submit a couple of uh, other uh, items in terms of valid passport, identity copies, and so forth. So if you also have any other questions, we'll have our contact information later on within the chats. Um, but these are pretty much the next steps since you've been admitted that you want to uh, proceed to do. So that way we can get you started for the last step, which would be registration which you will receive emails regarding for undergraduate um, during orientation dates that you'll meet with advisors and be able to set up your schedule, uh, as well as for postgraduates, more times than not, you will also uh, be reach, um, contacted by one of the faculty members to be able to help you with your schedule or when you arrive on campus. So either way, uh, we'll make sure that you do have your schedule so then you'll be able to start for fall 2021. So what I would like to do now is go on to um, the crux of this event, and it really is about the return on investment. So if Phyllis is here on the call, she can. Here I am. Great. Thank you, Phyllis. Thank you so much. Good morning to you. And Good morning to you. I'm going to hand it off in terms of everything that you do that's amazing here at Pace, along with everyone else that's following, but you, know, you kind of have the ins and outs in terms of how our students are going to be better prepared while they're in school and then afterwards. So I'm handing it off to you. 
Oh, thank you so much, Rob, and welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Phyllis Mooney. I am the executive director here at PACE of uh, Career Services. I've been with PACE now for 10 years. Um, it has been such an incredible journey and I love uh, working with our international students and to, see, to watch them succeed. Um, you know, we all know why you're coming to Pace University, and it's ultimately about the education that you will receive in the and how that will result in, in an outcome. So um, we're going to, be going to be with you every step of the way in career services and achieving um, that return on investment, that ultimate outcome. Um, because this experience, as we know, is all about getting you where you want to go. Um, outcomes. How does PACE compare to the national average? Well, for the past uh, number of years, since 2016, our overall employment rates for our graduates have been consistently 10 percentage points higher than the national average. And that is comparing ourselves to all schools nationally, um, and that's including the Ivy Leagues. Um, our Seidenberg International students do exceptionally well um, for the class of 2019 and also trending for the class of 2020. We're seeing that um, our Seidenberg graduates, their employment and continuing education rate um, six months within graduation is at 94%. And the combined starting salaries are just over uh, $71,000 American dollars per year. And um, our Seidenberg International students are working in some uh, very exciting industries and over 100 different employers hired um, our Seidenberg graduates for the class of 2020. The top five industries that our Seidenberg graduates are, uh, are going into um, and have been trending um, toward the past few years is in technology, telecommunications, financial services, healthcare, education, and consulting. And here are some examples of some of the amazing employers and types of positions that our Seidenberg graduates are going to after graduation. Um, you'll see that we have some of the really big brands in a variety of industries uh, represented here, including IBM and LinkedIn, Amazon, FedEx, Mercedes-Benz, Microsoft, Nissan, Spotify, Verizon, Warner Brothers, and even Wyndham Hotels and Resorts. And you can see here, um, this is a... a, a, a a pay student, Shrey, and he recently accepted a program manager position at Microsoft, and he's a computer science major. Um, it's no secret, um, one of the, uh, the reasons for the great success of our Seidenberg International students is the uh, internships um, that they do while they are students. Um, so some fast facts about our internship program here at Pace University. Um, almost 9,000 uh, internships and similar experiences were recorded, um, reported to us uh, by PACE students while they um, last year. Um, and of all of those internships where we have this, uh, the salary information, students told us that 81% um, 81, 81 of them were paid. And very excitingly, just um, a few weeks ago, we introduced uh, we launched paid remote micro internship program, which is available to Seidenberg international students as well. Um, and here is also um, a, a, some examples of the uh, amazing internships that our Seidenberg students um, have been holding. Um, and these are just an example of, of some of these internships that the past year. And you see, once again, we have some incredible brands represented in a variety of uh, different job functions that our Seidenberg students are going into. Um, and some of those um, some of those brands are Douglas Elliman Real Estate, Goldman Sachs, IBM, um, some of the hospitals, including NYU Langone, uh, PWC, it's a big four accounting firm, 
um, Sirius XM, Spotify, the New York Public Library, T-Mobile, and the list goes on and on. Um, here's a wonderful Seidenberg student. She's a, um, a former student. Um, she was an information systems major, Marlene. Um, she was formerly a software engineer intern at LiquidNet, and she's currently a software engineer at HubSpot. And so how do we achieve um, how do we achieve such great success? Well, it starts with our niche, our mission in career services. Um, our mission is to help every student find a great job and build the foundation of a successful career, no matter who they are, who they know, or what their major is. Uh, we understand there, um, that our international students have um, unique interests and needs. And what we've done in response to that is to create this wonderful program, INSPIRE program, which stands for the International Student Professional Readiness Education Program. Um, it's an immersive uh, career um, program required for all international students on F-1 visas. It's about a semester long. It includes in-person and online workshops, um, an international career fair, there's an app, um, to the program. It includes career panels and network and networking events. This is all to help our international students um, get prepared for internships and applying to jobs after graduation. We give them this dedicated time, which is about a semester long, um, all of this immersive attention um, that really is lays the foundation and sets them up for the incredible successes that I just shared with you. And it's my understanding what we're the only school um, out there that has such a, a program for international students. So in addition to that preparation um, that we um, embark on with all of our international students, we have this amazing employer relations team in career services, and they bring thousands of employers and opportunities uh, to PACE each year through targeted outreach and programming and also through our state of the art technology. Speaking of technology, um, we use the platform Handshake, which is a comprehensive career management platform. Just last year, even in the pandemic, we posted over 60,000 jobs and internships, um, many of which available to our international students, and those were posted by over 10,000 employers. And we also put on tons and tons of programming, um, including um, employer inform information sessions that we call spotlights. Um, just last year, we had a, a hundred unique employers uh, come on campus. And what I mean by coming on campus was uh, last year it was coming on campus virtually, um, but we did it very, very successfully. And those are opportunities for students to participate, hear the, the pitch of the employers, talk about their um, what, what kinds of opportunities that they offer students, what their um, recruitment um, timelines are, what types of opportunities that they have available, um, how many students that they hire from PACE per year, um, and, you know, uh, uh, you know, their culture, um, and then there's an opportunity for students to engage and network with these employers that we find to be um, tremendously successful and often lead to successful outcomes. And you can see here all of the great um, brand employers um, that come on campus. Um, and like I said, last year, we had over 100 employers participating in this and many weeks in semester, um, we'll have several employers participate and this happens all year round, um, including summer and winter breaks. And again, you can see we have Deloitte, Canon, NBA, NBC uh, Universal. We have sports teams, insurance companies, um, Sony, um, the big financial institutions, um, including Society General, Viacom, Zoom, hospitals, um, you name it. They're really, really wonderful events. Um, we also host lots of career fairs, um, including um, a technology fair, and we also host a career fair 
just for international students. And um, just last year, we had over 200 employers, unique employers participate in our many career fairs. Um, and last year, we did them all virtually and they were hugely successful. Um, both the employers and the students um, enjoyed them very much and um, they are resulting in fantastic outcomes. And we also hold lots of um, networking events and panels, and we have our also our on campus recruiting program. And just this month, earlier this month, we had a uh, panel um, to celebrate all of the students, it's about 90 of them, 90 international students who completed the INSPIRE program in the fall. We had a big celebration for them virtually, and we had eight of our very successful um, PACE, um, PACE graduates who were formerly international students on F-1 visas um, who were gainfully employed and very, very successful come and um, talk to our students and network with our students. And it was a fantastic event. And we host those um, all year long as well. And of course, we have um, a wonderful team that get that is is working with all of um, our, our international students getting them prepared bringing these opportunities um, all day every day um, um, to to you um, it's a very highly diversified staff we're all very mission driven and very outcomes focused uh, we're in this with you um, we're, we're, we're with you every step of the way, making sure that you're getting these opportunities, these internship opportunities onto CPT when you're a student and working with you until you land um, an opportunity um, during that OPT time. Um, you'll also find that um, the career services staff is made up of lots of experienced professionals, um, many from um, industry backgrounds. Um, each of the five schools has a dedicated career counseling team and a placement specialist, um, and of course, including uh, Seidenberg. And each team is an expert on all of their school's majors and the job and internship trends. So when you get to PACE, what you can expect from your Seidenberg career team? Well, first, it's the preparation piece. Um, your career counselors, counselors will help you complete um, and be with you every step of the way while you're going through the INSPIRE program. They will help you strategize um, with the, um, your Seidenberg placement specialist to identify US employers of various size across multiple industries that have CPT and OPT opportunities for you. So important to have a job search strategy um, and they'll work with you um, with that on that. Um, having a strategy results in great success. Um, we all, they'll also introduce you to numerous employers um, through all of our programming um, and, and also um, many PACE alumni. We have a great relationship with our alumni relations office and we are um, able to introduce you to our alumni through our mentorship uh, program um, through the um, our alumni relations um, office. And then, of course, um, help you land that position or with you the entire way through the application process, including the interviews, um, help working with you on your interview skills for every interview that you have and work with you until you land each C the CPT and OPT opportunity, and you can approach it with confidence and continued support while you're working. Um, I hope that you uh, stay in touch with with me um, before you come on campus. Uh, you can follow um, everything that we're, we're doing in career services. Probably the best way is to follow our, us on Instagram. That's at PACU Careers. Um, and also if any of you are active on LinkedIn, um, please link into us at Career Services at Pace University and you can see all of the uh, our activity and all of our um, our job opportunities that we post and any of the the uh, programming um, that is happening 
Um, and also, I wanted to make an announcement for all the deposited students, please stay tuned. Um, check your emails from admissions. We are launching a new initiative. Um, it's pre this our pre-inspire program. So you can get started on your preparation, um, get a kickstart on um, your career even before you get to Peace University. And that will be happening um, early this summer. So for you deposited students, please look for that email from the admissions department and I will be seeing you very, very soon. Um, so next I'd like to introduce uh, my colleague, um, Dr. Jonathan Hill, the Dean of Seidenberg. Good morning, Dr. Hill. Good morning, Phyllis. That is such a wonderful introduction. And uh, wow, it makes me want to go back to school and uh, take advantage of these amazing opportunities. Good evening to you or good afternoon or uh, good morning, wherever you are in the world that we are encountering you. We are delighted, absolutely delighted that you are here today. Uh, most of you are graduate students, a, a handful of undergraduates as well, but you are going to hear uh, really about the value proposition of studying at Pace University and specifically at the Seidenberg School of Computer Science and Information Systems. You are all very well informed, very intelligent people, or you would not be here because you understand that the future is technology and that in every discipline, every industry, being able to use, manipulate, and work with technology is the key to solving problems. And solving problems is the key to success because that is what the many wonderful employers that Phyllis and her team uh, work with are looking for, people who can come in and be great problem solvers. So New York is back. It is a beautiful spring morning here in the New York area. The trees are blooming, the birds are chirping, and people are going back to work. New York is coming back after the very difficult times of the pandemic, and people are eager, just like you are eager, to get back to studies, to get back to work, and to be successful. So there are four key areas that we believe lead to a great education and to a well-prepared professional who is ready to go out and fill these many wonderful jobs and internships that Phyllis talked about. First and foremost, you're coming to Pace University to get a great education. Our faculty are distinctive because they are active researchers. They get funding from the National Science Foundation, uh, from the big corporations like Google and Microsoft and IBM, and also from many of the foundations and from the Department of Defense and other places that focus on cutting edge technology. And they are passionate teachers. They bring that to the classroom. You come to Pace University not to be one of 240 students in a lecture hall, but one of 24 students in a small community classroom where everybody knows your name and the faculty are going to address you personally and work with you to increase, increase your strengths and to, uh, to soften your weaknesses to make you the very best person and professional that you can be. Studying in New York at Pace University uh, provides more opportunities than any place else because we are in the heart of the economic engine of North America. New York City uh, is home to many, many great uh, great companies and many, many great new small startups that are taking the kinds of technologies that we develop at the Seidenberg School and commercializing them and doing wonderful things. While you will have a wonderful classroom experience, you will uh, also be involved outside the classroom. You have the opportunity to be a graduate assistant, to be a research assistant, to be a teaching assistant you have the opportunity to work in labs where you really apply the theory that you learn in the classroom and work on industry sponsored projects. You have an opportunity to be part of our international design factory global network where you would work with students from Helsinki 
and Mumbai and Singapore and Rio de Janeiro, again, solving real world projects. And you will get to work with students who are from all over the United States and all over the world. It is a, a truly cosmopolitan experience. And there is no better place to go to graduate school than New York City. Our community is at the heart of what we do. We are a very inclusive, very supportive, very diverse community. And we work with and welcome everybody. That is our great strength. And we have uh, students from uh, very, very wealthy families and students from very, very humble beginnings, students who went to the best high schools and colleges and students who went from high to high schools and colleges that are more challenged. But together, we grow together, we develop wonderful opportunities. And together, we move into the future, believing in one another, you're going to hear from some of our very successful stellar uh, young alumni and current students. Uh, Drew Gandhi, Marta Hasni, and Yana Sirich are amazing young people that we are very, very proud of. And when you are looking at the university that you will attend, you really need to look around at the other students. Are these people that you want to spend your time with? Are these people who are going to make you better? Our students work hard, they certainly play hard but they are ambitious, they are kind, and they are very, very successful. And I look forward to having a chance to meet them. And upward mobility. We are focused on developing people as professionals and as individuals and taking those well-prepared professionals and, and strong individuals and creating that community to make a better pace and a better world. So. We are delighted, delighted that you're with us today. We really want you to be setters and to come to Pace University. And to tell you more about the Seidenberg School experience, I will turn you over to my ever talented colleague, Jill Olympieri. Good morning, Jill. Good morning, Dean Hill, and thank you so much. And um, I wanted to congratulate everybody that's here or that will see this video later um, on your acceptance to Pace, whether undergrad or grad. We are very excited um, to have you. And as the Dean said, you are obviously very talented um, in your previous education and experience. So we are pleased that you um, have um, put Pace as a top contender um, in hopes that we will see you in the fall. So much of our Seidenberg experience as Phyllis has outlined and what the Dean just covered um, is about the opportunity to build up your resume. So at the Seidenberg School and Pace, um, you would be getting a very tailored um, and fundamental opportunity in the classroom and project-based learning outside of the classroom. So whether you're really, really interested in computer programming, data science, cybersecurity, or artificial intelligence, just to name a few, um, you will get an opportunity to build out those skills, which are very much so um, a great start to a resume. Um, and then building on those fundamental skills and theories outside of the classroom with projects, um, engaging in many of our labs. We have the Applied Data Sciences Lab and our uh, Cybersecurity Education Research Labs. And you can really dive into um, the content and concentrations that you're interested in. Those opportunities are available for our undergrad and graduate students, or if you're a PhD student, or DPS, these are all open to you to start building out your resume and learning about some of the areas that you might be interested in. We're also amazing at the ability to transition between different majors. So if you're maybe an undecided student or you're not certain about what area you'd be interested in, these are great opportunities to dive in, talk to faculty, um, look at different career outcomes with the career services department, and really figure out where you'd like to go. Um, but building your resume out in the first, uh, you know, couple semesters that you're here and thinking about how the experiences that you take on will help you um, in the future in a different uh, position once you actually graduate from Pace. Other opportunities, like I said, Blue Collab, uh, Jonathan talked a little bit about, sorry, Dean Hill, about the design factory, which Drew will cover in a little while during our student panel. Um, he's very involved in our international opportunities with design thinking. Um, and really engaging in interdisciplinary activities outside of the classroom on an international level. We also have what we call the Seidenberg Creative Labs, which are paid opportunities 
for our students to do meaningful work in the community surrounding PACE and at a bigger global scale, where we really love to have international students uh, participate in activities uh, outside the classroom as well. So Phyllis um, did talk a lot about the career outcomes. Um, at the Seidenberg School, we're always also looking at the, the trending opportunities for students who are interested in technology and what those positions will look like in the next few years. So these are just three salaries um, of US dollars of the, the top trending positions here in the New York State, uh, in New York Tri-State area. Um, so these are just the, the trending positions, so data scientists, information security analyst, and software developer. So these are whether you're a CS uh, computer science major or data science or cybersecurity, these are definitely um, amazing starts uh, for you to really explore here at PACE um, and to see where these careers will take you. And I won't go over all the employers because Phyllis did a great job about explaining how the opportunities are here for you as an international student um, at many of these large scale or smaller scale uh, corporations. So after today, um, there's a lot to do. If you'd like to explore more and visit us uh, at PACE in the Seidenberg School, um, we have an online Discord uh, currently that's running. So there's lots of chatter and opportunity. We'd love you to join and see what's going on here uh, at the Seidenberg School in our virtual setting. Um, you've all been invited to our Seidenberg Innovation Awards, which is a celebratory event that we do each year that helps um, bring awareness and leadership discussions around technology. So we hope we'll see you at one of those events. Um, if you're in the area or you would like to attend virtually, um, we do have campus tours happening on our Pleasantville and our New York City campus. So we hope that you take advantage of those. And clubs and events um, on our Discord and on our website, we have lots of opportunities to take advantage of, to see, you know, kind of get your foot in the door to what that would look like as a Seidenberg student. You can also follow us. We share everything on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can follow the Dean on Twitter. He loves Twitter. Um, you can uh, follow us for different events or updates with our programs or new offerings that we have throughout the, this time in the spring as well as the summer. Um, and we're very excited. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to us at seidenberginfo at pace.edu. Um, if you have any questions about the process of what it's like to be an accepted student, what it would be to uh, be a Seidenberg student, we're happy to, to discuss with you outside of this as well. So I'm gonna pass it back to um, Rob Madrano. Um, so that we can move into our student panel. Great, thank you so much. Um, I want to invite Ms. Kelly Moran, Assistant Director of International Mission on the screen. And she is on, you probably received many emails from this young lady. She is definitely the person behind the department and um, coordinates many of our events and so forth. So I wanna just pass this on to her who has a list of questions and we have a great student panel here to be able to answer many questions and discuss their experiences. Thank you very much, Kelly. Take it away. Thank you, Rob. So as Rob mentioned, my name is Kelly Moran. and I am the Assistant Director of International Admission here at Pace University. For all of our undergraduate students on the call, you've probably seen my name in WhatsApp and emails all over the place. So it is very nice to see all of you and a special welcome to all of our graduate attendees as well. So to get started, I'd like all of our student panelists to turn on their videos and their microphones. All right, looks like we're good here. Awesome, thanks guys. So to get started, please just introduce yourselves, give us your name, uh, your program that you're studying, what campus you are studying on, and where you, you are from originally, please. Drew, if you'd like to get started. Sure. Uh, hey everyone, good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Dhruvil Gandhi, and currently I'm studying uh, computer science, uh, PhD. This is my third year doing PhD. And I am from Kolkata. Sorry, I forgot that part. I am from Kolkata in India. Awesome. Thank you. Yana, can you go next? Sure. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Yana. I'm from Mish, Serbia. Um, I graduated in 2020, and I majored in uh, computer science. Lovely. And last but not least, Marta? Yes, hi, my name is Marta. I'm from Kondizhin Kozla in Poland. Uh, I'm a computer science and a graduate student. And I'm currently a senior, so I've been at PACE for four years. Lovely, thank you guys. So to get started with the panel, we're gonna do a nice and easy one. What led you to choose PACE University? 
I can answer that first. Um, I was looking for, I came to PACE to do my master's first before doing my PhD. And I was looking for uh, a college that was at a good location and what's better than New York. And other than that, I also looked at all the different uh, events and programs and opportunities that I could do at PACE that was talked about by Jill, Dr. Hill. And that is why I decided PACE. I can follow up on that. Um, similarly for me, um, I think PACE uh, always had a really good reputation for opportunities and, you know, you know, both for jobs and internships. So in that sense, PACE, PACE seemed like a really, really great school. And then another thing for me that was really important was the really small class size, you know, that community feel. I felt very, very welcome from, you know, day one before I was even accepted to, to the school. So that was definitely one of the more important factors that um, shifted my decision. Yeah, for me, it was also really important that Pace was close to New York City. It's, um, there's so many opportunities in New York City. Uh, but also a big factor for me was swimming, since I'm on the swim team. Uh, the coach was just very, very nice. Uh, so it was also a huge factor when I was making a decision. Lovely. Okay. So talking a little bit more about your coursework, can you guys share a favorite class that you've participated in, um, either as a student or as an adjunct faculty member? You can choose. And if we want to keep the same order, Drew, if you want to go first. Sure. Um, I can speak on both. As a student, one of my favorite, two, there were two of my favorite classes. One was uh, Global Mobile Innovation, where we learned about different technologies for mobile development and how that can be used to solve problems around the world, which was taught by uh, Dr. Sharf. And my another favorite course was learning mobile app development with Hike, where we learned the newest technologies and how to build uh, apps or how to think about uh, solving problems for that. And then as an adjunct, my favorite course is teaching uh, design thinking and teaching product development, which uh, we do at New York City Design Factory, where students, they team up with another team in, let's say, Finland, Austria, or Switzerland, and they work on solving a problem, building a product for a company which sponsors their project. And they work in multi, uh, a diverse team in terms of skills. They'll work with uh, industrial engineers, mechanical engineers, business people, and everyone all together. Um, for me, uh, I haven't been a professor, so I only have student experiences, but there were also uh, two classes that um, I was particularly fond of. Uh, one of them is algorithms with Dr. Schmidt. Um, and it was primarily the way that the class was was organized and structured since, uh, you know, every every few weeks we had Google interviews that uh, both the students were interviewees and interviewers. So um, we were sort of practicing for the future, covering the materials that, that we just learned in class. So, so that was super fun. Um, and then the second class would be um, intergenerational computing, uh, where I had the opportunity to teach um, computing and, you know, how to use a computer to uh, the elderly in a nursing, in a nursing home with uh, Dr. Jean Capola. Yeah, for me, uh, my favorite class would be the one that I'm thinking right now. It's actually on graduate level. It's computer vision. I've been just really enjoying the material and the assignments uh, that we have in this class. I'm it's really interested in computer vision, so it's been really fun to take that class. Lovely. Thank you, guys. Hopefully, everyone attending has written down all of these as their uh, preferred courses for next semester. In shifting gears a little bit from academics to more so career services, talking a little bit more about what Phyllis and Dr. Hill and Jill were able to cover during their presentation, can you guys share a little bit more about your own career services opportunities, things that you've been able to participate in? That yeah, no, you can go ahead on this. Um, well, when, when I first came to PACE, I had uh, no resume, so career services played a really big part in, in that portion of my life, of my professional career. Um, we, uh, I believe uh, this was mentioned before, we do have a specific career services representative that works specifically with the um, Seidenberg School, and, and from what, what I understand, the resumes are a little bit different, you know, based on the field you're in, so that was a big help. 
Um, and, and I ex- actually extensively work with uh, Marty, uh, who, was, uh, who was a career services representative for Seidenberg for um, almost almost two years. We kept improving my resume. You know, I, I had no resume, so we built it up from scratch, and we kept improving it. Um, he uh, he helped me a lot with applying to internships uh, via handshake. Um, even with the connections that Pace had, you know, he would follow up on those uh, those applications that I submitted. Assisted with um, cover letters or like finding the appropriate people to get a recommendation letter from. But essentially, it was a very big help not to just get started, but to also you know continue with the good work ethic in terms of like updating my resume and you know finding the right opportunities and whatnot. So in that sense, you know, career services played a really, a really big part. And and I, I do remember throughout, you know, freshman year when I didn't really know much, much about resumes and wasn't really thinking too much about work opportunities and whatnot. Um, career services really had a lot of useful, you know, in person, I'm guessing other virtual, but they had a lot of uh, workshops and, you know, how to build up your resume, how to do a elevator pitch and whatnot. So you know, those little uh, workshops and activities and the assistance that, that I got was was really meaningful and, and really, really helpful. And I can add on that. With that, uh, career services helped me with uh, understanding how to transition because for me, I was fresh out of uh, undergrad and then I started my grad school here. So I, I used to, uh, I work with them. They helped me polish my resume. Uh, polish my LinkedIn, how to reach out to different employers or who to reach out to, or uh, they had different workshops like interview workshops, technical coding workshops that helped me prepare for my interviews. Yeah, I also work with the career services on my resume a lot, but lastly, uh, I've been also utilizing the mock interviews at the career services. Uh, I was lucky to get some interviews at some big companies, so uh, I've been trying to really navigate through the process properly, so the mock interviews have been really, really helpful. Very good to hear. Thank you, guys. So next, we're going to talk a little bit more about life on campus, some of the more fun questions. For our attendees, if you have more specific questions that we're not covering, please feel free to use the chat feature, and I'll be happy to ask your questions to our panelists directly. But while we're waiting for those, let's talk about events on campus. So can you guys share any events on campus that you really enjoyed attending, either academically, professionally, or just socially, things that were fun to do on campus? My favorite events on campus are uh, when uh, we get external speakers, when they come in like industry uh, specialist or someone working outside on a research or in some company. When we get to uh, talk with them, they share their experience, how uh, the things are going in tech, what's the next big thing, how they're working or how they solve a problem. And uh, we get to see everyone from different industries. Those are definitely my favorite events. Um, I was a bit more fun oriented um, with the question. Um, you know, through the Honors College, we had a lot of opportunities to, you know, go to Broadway for uh, pretty low prices or, you know, um, do fun events like go to Six Flags or uh, go to Chelsea Market. We even walked the High Line ones. So there was a lot of, you know, community type of fun activities that we that we did. And, and I was on the Pleasant Hill campus. So you know, going to New York City was maybe a bit of a cost, but that was all provided for basically free. So that was that was really nice. Um, and in terms of like academic, I think the the most fun event was um, the Rat Relay Challenge that I participated in. Uh, so uh, I believe Drew is pretty involved with, in, involved with that, but just to you know, sum it up, we essentially was the the last day, last team that got to fix up the presentation on a product that we were working, which was building an application for children that were, uh, you know, autistic. So that was that was pretty cool uh, from the academic side. Yeah, I also really enjoyed the events organized by the Honors College, going to the Broadway shows for very, very cheap. That has been really fun and very nice. Uh, but also being at the Pleasantville campus, it's really fun to go to all of the sports events, go to football games. It's something that you can really do at home because there is no football. Uh, but also being a swimmer, uh, the swim meet star has been really, really fun. So I'd encourage everyone to go uh, and go to the sports activities and go 
uh, cheer for the swimmers and other athletes. Awesome. Okay, so I know a big concern that students have when they move to New York is that they're not going to be able to eat their favorite foods, have a home cooked meal, things like that. So let's talk a little bit about food in New York and the New York area. What is your favorite thing to eat in the New York City area or the Pace Campus area? That is a really hard question to answer. Like there are many places, many cuisine. For any cuisine you pick, you have different restaurants to try and you rarely go back to the same place. You'll always find something else to try on. That is my take on favorite foods. I'm, I'm the same way. I actually started a Mapster page where I label every restaurant that I've been to. I'm up to like 60 for the six months that I've lived in New York. And I don't go to the same restaurant again. So I try to go to each restaurant once. And there was like some weird statistic that in New York City, you can go like 55 years without ever going to the same restaurant. So there's definitely a million options. You will never have to eat the same thing from the same restaurant so never worry about that. And, and there's so many cuisines, so many different types of places. Um, so it's very vibrant, very interesting. Um, and yeah, it's, it's super, super fun to be here in terms of like food and, and whatnot. Yeah, I'm also trying to try as many different food as possible. There's so many options here. Uh, but if I would have to pick one thing that I always kind of try to look for, uh, I've been really enjoying the pad thai here. Uh, it's much better than it is at home. So that that's the one uh, dish that I've been really enjoying here. Awesome. Thanks, guys. I am partial to pizza myself, but I grew up in New York, so I feel like that's kind of a given. Uh, but as all of our panelists said, everything that you eat in New York is pretty good, and it's always a lot of fun to try new things. So hopefully all of you get that opportunity as well. Next thing I want to talk about is a little bit about COVID-19 and just the safety me measures that you guys have been seeing on campus and in the city itself. Uh, I know last year, it's crazy that it's already been a year, but it's definitely been um, a year of transitions. And if you guys could speak to just the different protocols and how you've been able to adapt to life on campus or life in the city with these new protocols in place. Uh, I'll speak from the uh, academic side uh, and even side both. Uh, when we went online, the switch was like uh, a snap. We had to switch within the weekend, but the switch went pretty good in my opinion all the classes that i was taking went online we were learning really well uh the experience was a little bit different but not too much uh, and then in terms of events as well everything switched online it stayed the same the benefit that it gave was instead of running from uh let's say the seidenberg building to the main place building or from one place to another we could just simply switch from one Zoom to another. But um, online experience was all right. It went well. Um, I'm, I'm no longer in school, but I did experience, uh, you know, a part of a part of my last semester I was, was hit by COVID and all of my classes shifted to um, remote learning. And additionally, you know, I lived in a um, big communal dorm with communal bathrooms and whatnot. So Pace was really good about switching us to, you know, private suites and, and, and rooms that had their own bathrooms so we wouldn't have to share with other people. Um, I know the situation is much better now, so um, uh, I think things have gotten a little bit back uh, to normal, but I'm, I'm happy to say I'm fully vaccinated now, so um, I'm really happy about that, uh, hoping to resume life a little bit more normal uh, soon. And yeah, I work from home. I, I wipe all of my groceries. I try to stay away from public transportation so you know just being extra extra careful even even though i'm vaccinated so yeah yeah being on campus has been uh much much different uh right it's much much different than it used to be right now um there's much less people here and uh, basically everything you do you do from your room um so it, it is completely different it was hard at first but i would say at this point i'm just uh, used to it and hopefully it's going to go back to be somehow normal soon. And, right. Oh, sorry, continue. No, one thing I, I was uh, trying to add was with uh, different procedures like submitting our results, we can go on campus and still access all the resources that are there. That's what I wanted to add. With proper safety measures, we can uh, visit different places on the campus. 
That is a great point. So campus is still open. We're just making sure that all of our students are getting tested regularly and making sure that everyone on campus is feeling well. It's just to protect the students, the staff, faculty, the overall PACE community, we wanna make sure that everyone is doing well and staying healthy, but campus is still open and we are very hopeful uh, to be more fully operational in the fall. In terms of the fall actually, so for students currently making their decision, what advice would you give them in terms of how you chose PACE or what they should be thinking about when making their college decision? Uh, what you should think about is um, access to classes, access to research, access to different opportunities and how uh, the world would look post COVID. Like now things are slowly moving back as to they were, everyone is announcing reopening. What you should be thinking of is how you can take advantage of the opportunities that uh, your college would be offering, Seidenberg would be offering in terms of research or in terms of opportunities and outreach. Um, I, can, I can add a little bit to that. Um, for me, the most important thing was was the community feel. I, I, I just felt so very welcome from the very start. Um, and, and I was conflicted about a couple of schools, but I had the, I had the dean contact me personally and we Skyped and I had um, um, uh, Andrea Cotterano, uh, who was at the time, I believe, assistant dean, um, contact me as well. So, you know, just the effort that the school has shown and, and the, the fact that, you know, the class size was pretty small. It's always been important to me that, to know my professors and for them, you know, to know me and they're your sort of biggest connection, one of the biggest connections to the to the opportunities that you have uh, in, in the real world. So, you know, that whole feeling of community and feeling of belonging there and feeling welcome was just very important. And I think, you know, the most important thing is for you to feel comfortable at school. And I think Seidenberg is a place that, that will definitely give you that. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, I would say uh, just really research through all the schools that you got accepted in and see what their opportunities are and find a place where you fit. Uh, um, you can gain what you want out of the out of your degree. I would say that's the most important. And for our final question, for those students who have made their decision or will come to make their decision that PACE is the place for them, what is one piece of advice that you can give them to ease their tr transition to New York and to Pace University? My biggest advice we having experienced throughout would be ask. If you need anything, ask, you will definitely get it. And as Yana mentioned in previous question, is, uh, previous question it's a very close-knit community. You'll definitely get all the support you need. When you come to Pace, always ask for the help that you need, never hesitate. Yeah, I would, I would, I would agree with that. I think um, for me, it was very challenging. Even, even though I don't think I have like a thick accent or people couldn't understand me, well, I was very, uh, you know, wary and conscious about speaking out and and uh, asking questions and being confident and raising my hand in class. But you know, my professors and my community has always been very, very supportive, and people were always very encouraging and taking their time, you know, listening to me, and, you know, within two, three months, I've built up my, my confidence and was, like, the loudest person in class, raising my hand always, so always, you know, don't be shy, don't be scared, always ask, always, oh, people will always help you, and they will always answer your question and, and try, to, try to help you uh, to the best of their knowledge. Yeah, I agree with everyone. It's important to ask questions and just don't be afraid to ask for help if you need it. All right, well, lovely. Just to echo our panelists, the asking questions piece of things starts now. If you guys have any questions throughout your application process, throughout your admissions process, now's the time to ask. Uh, myself and my colleagues in graduate admission are here to help. So if you guys have any questions about submitting your deposit, submitting your documents for I-20, how do you get your student visa, things like that. Now is the time. You're of course welcome to submit your questions right now if you have any last minute ones for our panelists. But just in general, you guys can always contact us. Our contact information is all over the website or you can WhatsApp or WeChat us in one of the student group chats as well. So just to do some quick housekeeping while we're waiting for any last minute questions. Circling back to the beginning of the presentation, we showed you the deposit link. 
keeping in mind, you can access your student deposit link via your applicant dashboard. So that would be where you viewed your decision letter. You're able to submit your deposit right there. You're also able to see all the documents that you need to submit for your student I-20. Keeping in mind, if those words are a little um, foreign to you, the I-20 is the document that you're gonna need in order to apply for your F-1 student visa. So that can also be found in an email. The email is titled Request for Form I-20 Documentation. So you guys can search your inboxes real quick, get a look for what documents you need to submit and send them on in. We'll be happy to process your documents very quickly and get you a visa appointment or help you get a visa appointment shortly after. In terms of uh, our last point is the pre-inspire program that Phyllis mentioned earlier in her presentation. So the INSPIRE program is what you would be a part of as an international student here with Career Services. The pre-INSPIRE program is going to be offered to all of our deposit paid students over the summer. So once you make your decision, you'll probably receive an email likely in the middle of April. So keep an eye out for that and sign up for it shortly. As our panelists mentioned, Career Services has been instrumental in helping them with their resumes and their mock interviews. So it's definitely a good department to get in contact with sooner rather than later. And I see that we do not have any further questions for our panelists. So I will give a big, big thank you to the three of you for joining us early here in New York. And thank you for all of our attendees and our previous presenters as well. We appreciate everybody. And if you have any questions, please feel free to follow up via email. Have a great day.